All right. Um, welcome everyone to the October 19th, 2020 RTD Accountability Committee meeting. I believe this is meeting number four. And I'm told that Crystal Murillo, Murillo is um, on uh, via phone. Crystal, are you there? I'll send you, uh, I just sent it to Shelly. I'll send you the one that came to me. Uh oh, from the, I can hear Lynn. Can hear but, okay. All right, well, I'm going to keep sharing until my co chair um, is audible. And um, uh, so, Melinda, Crystal says she's Hi muted. there. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Take okay. it away, Crystal. My apologies, team. I'm going to stay off camera. I've been having tech issues, um, but I am here. You just can't see me, but I can see all of your wonderful faces. Um, so I am going to get us started. Um, so first thing is to call the meeting to, to begin. Um, call to order. Um, I. Can you, we have these meetings so sparingly now, I can't recall if we need to take roll call or if just having a Dr. Cog staff confirm that everyone's on based on who's on the call now. I think we have a quorum and so maybe since we're starting late, we'll skip introductions. For those of us who have video, we can see everybody on the screen because there's only seven of us, one, two, three, four. Perfect. Yes. So. Alrighty. Uh, thank you for that clarification. Um, next agenda item is public comment. Um, do we have anyone signed up for public comment? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Matthew, did you receive anything for public comment? Okay, um, so what I'll do is I'm gonna uh, open up the lines to see if there's anyone on the phones for public comment. So I'll do that now. Uh, if there's anyone on the phones for public comment, please hit star six to unmute yourself. Okay, I'm not hearing anyone. Uh, yes, if there's anyone hi. Excuse me. Good morning. Oh. Yeah, this is this is uh, Ulysses Cleckley, Executive Director of the Denver Department of Transportation and Infrastructure. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Very good. So, so one one appreciates uh, the opportunity to speak real quick, um, and appreciate all the work um, that the committee is currently engaged in. But I just wanted to take a couple moments just uh, to uh, express the willingness from the city and county of Denver to work with the committee and the respective uh, three subcommittee groups uh, as the committee begins to develop recommendations uh, on the next generation of RTD and RTD services. I'm sure everybody is aware that uh, Denver is very critical to the core services and really the success of RTD as future. And we wanna make sure that uh, we uh, although not represented, not represented um, officially on the committee, we want to make sure that the committee understands that we want to partner with each and every one of you and make sure that the results from the work align with the city and counties Dem uh, of Denver's um, transit goals. And so we are heavily interested in investing more frequently into transit. And due to the fact that um, uh, we had the opportunity to provide this uh, investment from a local standpoint. We want to ensure that whatever we come up with aligns fully with the recommendations from either the three subcommittees or from the committee as a whole. So, so the request is just to ensure transparency for us as we move forward and uh, make sure that uh, we have a way to have a uh, semi-formal um, method to provide feedback and input into the committee's work. So that being said, uh, Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. I know we're going to have staff that will be available uh, to participate in all three of the work groups. And again, we're just asking for that partnership. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Cleckley. Uh, and it looks like someone wrote in and uh, we do have another uh, public comment from Paolo Salorzano. My apologies. Uh, you have three minutes, Paolo, and then I'll ask you to make your closing statements. Cool, thanks. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks. Um, I am um, Paolo Sorzano. I'm just, I've I'm a, been a user of, uh, or I've been using uh, RTD since, uh, oh, probably like 10 years or more. Um, but um, I've, you know, I've reached out to, to staff and, you know, to uh, I've reached out to several people here on, at the accountability committee, but um, just, I guess my, my public comment right now, just, you know, as far as um, the the situation in RTD, it's been pretty dire for 
Um, since 2017, um, it's been absolutely like um, a, a, a nerve wracking experience to say the least to use um, uh, the bus um, um, since then. And um, it's just, as far as just the uh, the most impacted uh, low income, which I've been, I've been trying to get out of, um, you know, a, a little hard stretch I had, but um, being transit dependent, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's been it's been bad. Um, the I just like to right now, as far as accountability um, and something that's really tangible, like I think is um, just the scheduling, and maybe something that short term could be like, you know, um, if not taken care of right away, but like transparency as far as to like why. Well, I'll say this that RTD has had like difficulties adhering to their own scheduling um, for a long time. And um, there's a lot of bad um, information and, you know, um, scheduling information out there online, but uh, um, it just it just makes it so it's, um, it, it, you know, the quality of service is not there. If basically like um, a few examples are like the, uh, um, the stop signage, uh, the physical stop signage and out at the light rail stations have not, they've been not working and they're actually showing the wrong times often. Um, you know, for ADA people who want to like use that, you know, um, or rely on that, you know, it's pretty, pretty bad. Um, and just for anybody, you know, you make decisions off of the information that's displayed. But um, it also goes for a lot of scheduling on the Android devices linked to Google. Um, I've talked to like Michael and Ford and Jesse, and I've been talking to Steve Martingano, who's the deputy chief of police there. But this is all this is all public safety stuff. You know, people getting stranded out there. Um, they either get ticketed. Um, you want to talk about equity? Um, ticketed. Um, I don't know. Maybe you know, just hostile situation. They're being out there alone when you're not planning for it, or even being stuck out in the elements. You know, people get sick, and then. It just compounds over thousands of trips. I mean, over years, it's been uh, a lot of lives that have been affected. But I mean, if the scheduling, if there's somehow we can just get to the scheduling, you know, I don't want to go, I, can't, I don't have time to go into details, but even the email notifications that are going out for canceled trips right now are going out an hour late. So there's just no point to any of this. And it's just, it's just, the, yeah, quality of service is, it's pretty bad. And 18% of people feel safe. Only 18% of people feel safe using the bus now. So I guess that's all I want to say. And um, yeah, I just, you know, if anybody has any ideas about how this could be tackled right away, I think it's just square one, you know, scheduling, but yeah, thanks. All right, thank you for your comments. Uh, all right, and uh, with that, I do not see any other public comment. Uh, Madam Chairs, if you'd allow me to go ahead and remute everyone and then uh, we can continue. Okay, I think. Okay, I think we're going to continue. You might just need to unmute yourself again, uh, Chair Mario. Okay, go. there we go. Yeah, I, I think you included me in the initial unmuting. But um, yeah, I just wanted to thank the folks um, who chimed in on public invited to be heard. Um, it was an earlier part of our discussion to make sure that we had that um, incorporated into these meetings. Additionally, I was wondering if we could just have somebody follow up with Mr. Solorzano um, about his concerns on kind of the real time um, issues around, um, the, you know, the incorrect times or, or if we could at least get a follow up because I, I think, again, long term, we're, we're going to be trying to address some of those concerns, but sounds like he's having some real time issues and I'm hoping somebody could follow up with him and CC me on getting that resolved and uh, kind of immediately, if possible. Yes, yeah, Mario, Jack could I, yeah, could I make a comment? Um, I think I feel very badly for that man. And I think uh, one of my concerns with this group is that that really is an issue for the RTD board, not the accountability committee. And so I think we have to make, um I, I, and i if i was you i'd want to understand how it's followed up with but i but i guess how do we differentiate those type of public comments some that are better really left to the day-to-day -day operations that are happening with the board and should be handled 
by the elected body there, not this body. We're kind of more planning for the future. So I, I don't have an answer, guys. I just think that public comment to me certainly demonstrated a challenge we have with the public so they understand what our role is versus what the elected board's role is. Yeah, Jackie, I think you bring up a really good point. And I, I'm not sure I have a, a silver bullet on how to address that. I, I think what it sounds like, he threw out some names that he has, um, Mr. Solosano has reached out to several leadership members. Um, I don't know if he's reached out to RTD board members, but it sounds like he doesn't feel like things are getting resolved so that he he felt it was appropriate to bring to the RTD accountability committee. Just, just from what I'm hearing in that conversation, to your point about how we handle and differentiate those concerns, um, I, you know, if anyone has any thoughts on how to do that moving forward. Um, so far, I, I believe this is the only public comment we've had. So luckily it hasn't been an issue, um, but I think just based on each comment, it might be appropriate to just figure out um, based on our elected representation um, who, who join our calls at times um, to see if that's a conversation for them to address or for us to uh, address in our recommendations. Um, that's just my thoughts. Uh, uh, Crystal? Chairman Jones? Yes. Um, I would just add to that. Um, I think, uh, I think uh, I agree with both you and Jackie. Um, so in the short term, this is an RTD issue to follow up with this gentleman and, and address those issues in real time. Probably not the committee's work. And what the, the piece of the um, feedback that we need to hear is that this is probably an ongoing problem that we need to make sure is on our to-do list to take a look at and see if there's recommendations we can make in sort of long term to address um, um, issues around reliability and the communication with the public and ADA access. And those things are on our list, but this is sort of real-time corroboration that those are important. And if I could just add a, a note to um, Ulysses' comments about Denver's involvement that I do think it's very important for uh, Denver to, uh, for us to be in close communication with Denver as we develop recommendations. Um, Denver is the physical hub of the, the RTD system and uh, I think that our subcommittees uh, will become um, sort of robust places for dialogue around the recommendations and I hope and encourage Denver to participate in those as well. I saw Lynn's hand up. I don't, Crystal, I don't know if you can see, have a way of knowing whose hands are up, so maybe I'll just feed them to you as, a, as people ask to speak. Um, Lynn, you, I, right now I can yeah. see them. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I saw Ron and I didn't see Lynn if that was a hand that was up, but go ahead. You're muted, Lynn. Your your audio's muted, Lynn. <laughs> there Melinda, Melinda, do you have us muted? No, yeah. she's she, she self-muted on her end. Keep talking, we'll try to listen. There we go. Sorry, yep. was having troubles. Um, I'm happy to uh, take the, the issue from uh, um, the gentleman that was talking back. He did mention some people he's been talking to and, and just in the short run, you know, take it back to staff and, and uh, uh, see where we are and, and report back to the chairs or to the committee or whatever else would help there. Thanks, Lynn. Right, you did have your hand up. Yeah, my comment was what Elise said. <laughs> Elise okay. said. And, uh, but I, I would say that we do need to have a policy. Just as Jackie said, you know, Jeff gets calls all the time from people about not getting their trash picked up. He's a state senator. He's probably not going to be able to solve that problem for him. But there are some things that naturally fall to us and some things that don't. And it would be good if we said, this is how we're going to handle these things. And, and figure out a way to say it so it's not like we're saying that's not our department. So that they feel like yeah. they are being heard. Yeah, right. I, I agree. We don't want to say, yeah, that's not our responsibility. The <laughs> end. <laughs> um, maybe we can uh, put some thought behind um, how we'll address some of those extraneous um, comments uh, and, and share them out at the next full committee, it sounds like we might need to uh, talk through this a little bit more just so that we can, you know, talk through dynamics and just how to make this 
a seamless process. Is that okay with the committee if we kind of discuss internally and then come back with you all with a recommendation? Okay, Jackie, did you have a comment? The only thing I, I might suggest is that um, is that we be clear in our um, in the information that's available to the public about this committee about what it is we do and what we don't do, and that we do care about reliability and um, and service uh, issues, but that we are not going to be able to address the day to day issues. So in our focus areas, if we if we have that written down, I guess, and, and I don't have the words today, but I'm suggesting maybe we put some words together and that um, when information goes out about these meetings, uh, that is made clear, um, that this is a planning for the future. We want, it, we, we, we want to hear your concerns today with RTD. We're not going to be able to address those, but we will forward those on to the board, the RTD elected board to address. So just some language I'm think, suggesting in our documentation around these meetings. Great. We will um, include that in our conversations. Uh, perfect. All righty, y'all. Let's keep this uh, conversation going. Um, so no more public comments. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at the meeting summary uh, from September 14th? And are we all okay with that summary, summarization? Seeing thumbs up, head nods. Looks I'll good. ask if anyone opposed, that might be easier. Nope, not seeing any opposition. Perfect. Uh, so the next agenda item is the introduction of our on-call on -call consultants, North Highland. And who is Anna? Are you the representative? Good afternoon or good morning. Um, I am from North Highland and Tanya Eidelman, um, also from North Highland, is on the phone. Um, I'm not sure if she is, I think she's going to take herself, um, uh, bring her camera up uh, also, my guess is, but we don't use um, this technology as much as many others, so, so she may not have seen the camera. Um, but yes, the two of us are here. We're thrilled to be working with you all. Um, uh, and happy to uh, provide you a, a an introduction to the firm um, or to uh, our expectation of our work and a little bit about our proposal, whichever you would prefer. Uh, sounds like all of the above would be really relevant uh, to include. All right, great. And I think here is Tanya, is my guest, because I just saw another screen pop up. Um, so I am a vice president at North Island. Um, I oversee our transportation work nationwide. Um, I will be working directly with you, um, and I'm very excited for that. I've worked um, with a number of clients uh, very similar to um, RTD uh, on actually both coasts and in the middle of the country. Um, and Tanya Eidelman, um, who is now on screen, uh, will be a day program manager. Um, to get off mute, I think there is a little microphone, Tanya, that should show up in red. Um, and you should be able to push that to get off of mute. But now you're gone from the screen as well, Tanya. You're back on screen. Do you have a little microphone? There we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. It's nice to meet you all. Um, as Anna said, I'll be um, the project manager. Very excited to be working with you all at, uh, at RDT. Just give you a little bit about my background. Well, I've been at North High, I've got about 12 years of experience in transportation um, and about 10 years of that actually working for a public transportation agency um, at SEPTA in Philadelphia. Worked with them for about 10 years um, as, uh, in operations and also in their finance and planning division. And through that, I did a lot of work with our regional MPO, partnering with the city of Philadelphia um, and PennDOT, other regional stakeholders. So uh, very familiar with how important it is to get everybody together and aligned and, and, and working together that, that you're all seeking uh, to achieve the same goals. And um, you know, that takes a lot of coordination and dedication. So very excited to be a part. 
We'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about um, work that we've done of a similar nature. Um, I know New Jersey Transit is one of the references that we talked about in our proposal where we did a top to bottom management and organizational review for the entity. Um, obviously, NJT is not um, wholly similar to, but has many components that are similar to um, RTD. Um, uh, or we could just answer questions about um, about who North Highland is as a firm, if you're curious about that. And Are there any questions from the committee at this time? So apologies, Anna. Doesn't look like there are any committee questions. Jackie, there we go. Um, you're so there, I, I know I was I, I moved it away so I could see everybody's face and now I have to pull it back up to unmute myself. So um, I guess uh, thank you both for, for that brief introduction. And for those of us who were not able to participate on the consultant selection, I guess I would love to understand from your perspective, just very, very briefly, um, what you think your relevant experience will bring to this process. I mean, you talked a little about the organizational review that you did. Um, for New Jersey Transit, but for those of us that didn't hear the full presentation. Sure, so my apologies, I'm not, I wasn't clear on who knew what, yeah. um, you know, this is sort of, um, it's good to meet you all. Um, uh, so having that understanding of, of that you might not all have the same background is very, very helpful. So let me just then take a step back to go to kind of the 50,000 foot level because North Highland is not a household name. Um, so North Highland um, is a management and um, uh, technology consulting firm. Um, we are global. Uh, we're about uh, 1,300 folks U.S. Um, so we're similar to, um, but not the same as what might be the household names of the big four management consulting firms like KPMG and Deloitte and those that you that you might have heard of. Um, the big differences between those firms and North Highland, um, and they are big, um, is first off, we are not a systems in integrator. So we would never come with a team of 200 people saying, we know you need X system, and now we're going to implement it for you. Um, the second is we obviously don't do tax audit or assurance, or I say it's obvious, it's obvious to me. Um, as a consulting firm, we are only consulting, we don't do the tax audit or assurance, which are a big part of the those big four um, firm profiles. Um, and um, another market difference um, between our firm and those firms is that we are an employee owned firm um, and we try to have at least 50% of any project team um, residing in the place that we are supporting. So we'll bring in subject matter experts from other places to the extent that it is appropriate and necessary, but we don't fly in an entire team to a place that is unknown to us um, and then fly out that whole team on a Thursday night, right? That's a model um, that the big firms use. And, and I am an alumni of two of the big firms. So many of us have been through the big firms and know them well, um, uh, but we don't do that. We think it's important to live where you work and work where you live um, in part because it's um, it, it provides a different quality of life that allows our team to sort of um, stay on their best game because they're not forever jet lagged and exhausted. Um, but we also think more importantly, that it means that we bring a different level of passion to the clients that we're serving because we see our clients, um, kids on the little league uh, court, right? So it's that's an importance that, that was part of how we were founded as North Highland um, and, and that remains um, core to what we do and who we are. Um, we have both commercial and public sector practices. So we serve, um, a majority of the, the Fortune 100 firms. Um, public sector, um, we support predominantly transportation and health and human services clients with a whole suite of others in there, um, but we have whole teams dedicated to transportation and whole teams dedicated to health and human services. In the transportation space then, so sort of continuing to get a little more narrow as we go, um, in the transportation space, um, we have supported uh, the majority of um, the largest of the transit um, entities in the US having worked with MTA in New York, MJT in New Jersey, Port Authority, New York, New Jersey, um, SEPTA, MARTA, Greta Serta, um, 
and LA DOT, I think probably, well, and TriMed and Sound Transit. So we've kind of covered um, covered most of the major of the transits. We've also worked in um, the DOTs uh, and tolling entities as well as airports in the transportation space. Um, and I'm mentioning our US clients, but we also have a large team in the UK. Um, and while I mentioned we were global, our US and our UK practices are part of the same um, PL. And so we really cross thread our lessons learned and what we do on a very regular, IE, almost daily basis um, because we're always on Zoom together now. So, um, so we work on clients together. So, for instance, when we worked um, on the NJT audit that I referenced, um, which was a top to bottom management and organizational review of NJT. Um, we brought in some of our team from the UK to support that, um, that team having deep expertise and having worked at Network Rail. So a very relevant um, parallel um, set of experiences that would be um, of value to NJT. Similarly, when we supported the MTA in New York City um, on asset management, um, we brought in one of our team members who had supported um, a very large asset management program in London. Um, so that's kind of the, the who we are um, at, a, at a macro level and some of the expertise that we have US and then also pulling in the UK. Um, in terms of uh, background that we think will be particularly relevant um, to the work of Dr. Cog and, and to RTD, um, as I mentioned, we have worked with a number of um, transits in the US, um, including the full review of NJT, where we really touched on all of the different aspects of, um, but we've also gone very deep at SEPTA in working um, with their inspector general and looking at their um, testing, hiring, training, and onboarding programs, um, as well as a number of other areas in less deep ways. Um, but that's one, I think, other of the, the experiences that we probably mentioned in our proposal. Um, similarly, we have gone deep in, in some of those workforce and change management areas um, at both MARTA and LA Metro. Um, and um, and then we've brought IT expertise um, and reviews of IT systems from a number of different, both transit entities, but also um, uh, tollway and airport entities. So I think we've got a lot of experience in looking at, um, with external lenses, um, many of the same challenges you're, you're looking to, um, to review. All righty, thank you, Anna. Uh, for that um, overview. I, I think we are all really excited to have you guys on board and to work with you moving forward. Um, in the interest of time, I know we, we have um, conversations around subcommittees and just refined priorities. I'm going to cut off questions at this time, but I encourage all of our subcommittee members to email Anna or Tanya um, with any questions. Um, if you should have any follow up. So thank you both again, Tanya and Anna for, for joining us this morning. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the, the next uh, point on the agenda is the appointment of subcommittee chairs. Um, and I just wanted to give you all a little bit of context um, and context for the public. Um, you know, we have a kind of a broad charge um, with what accountability means as it relates to RTD and gotten some feedback from several committee members and and public members of the public around our ability to offer recommendations um, in a timely manner and just kind of the speed uh, and scope of our work in these different subcommittees and so um, we felt that it would be important to help foster I guess moving along the conversation and, and the thought of chairs or our subcommittees was a kind of solution to that concern. Um, so we, and also in the interest of time, um, kind of took it upon ourselves to solicit um, input from the committee on who might want to serve as those coach uh, chairs of the subcommittee. And so I just want to announce kind of the result of that inquiry. So, um, Congratulations to Rut Bridges. He's going to be serving as the chair of the Finance Committee. <laughs> um, 
uh, we are very excited to have him. Sounds like he was already taking on that responsibility. So thank you for your leadership um, thus far. And we look forward to that moving forward. Um, Julika Mullick, Julie Mullica uh, is going to be the chair for the governance committee. And Dea Zavala was going to, is going to be the chair of the operations subcommittee. And again, we thank you, all three of you, for willingness to step up into this leadership role. And we're, we're hoping that this creates a little more um, movement in our conversations and coordination between the subcommittees and between Co-Chair Jones and I. Um, uh, Co-Chair Jones, is there anything you want to add about that process? I believe we're at the point in the agenda where I'm going to hand it off to you anyways. Thank you, Crystal. And um, I would just add that um, I think we're all collectively feeling that we have a lot of important work to do and it's time to get her done. And so we, we naturally, it takes a while to get things set up. We've taken that time and now we need to actually make progress um, and, and really start um, putting pen to paper on recommendations. And so we're now officially diving deep and we're gonna push hard. So with that, we're going to um, get some very brief, with an emphasis on brief, just updates from the three subcommittees on, uh, on the work that's been done to date, since not everybody gets to participate in all subcommittees. And I'm gonna be watching the clock, you know, three, four minutes would be perfect. So we're gonna start off with finance. Rhett, will you uh, demonstrate succinct and pithy um, update um, of what we've been doing on finance. Okay, so there were two meetings, and so at three minutes each, that's, sh never mind. Um, the the uh, first, first of the two, basically we spent a lot of time looking at a uh, financial report and really understanding, thanks to input uh, from Ron Papstorf, uh, what all the pieces of that are. Uh, we spent uh, a little time basically going through the objectives and saying, yeah, this is about what we want. Although with the proviso that it may get edited a little bit as, it, as we go forward. And then uh, the rest of the time we spent basically saying, this is additional information that we're gonna need. And we went through a, a fairly detailed list of that and, uh, and we're getting good support as always uh, with, with what we need from, Matthew and, and, uh, and RTD as well to do that. So the most recent finance committee meeting, uh, Doug, Doug Rex had already pre prepared and provided a draft of peer agency comparisons. Uh, a couple of interesting takeaways. The ones that caught my eye were the fact that, the, that half the population of Colorado lives within the district that RTD is managing. And also the second one is that the district is about a little larger than the state of Delaware. It is a big district. So those are some of the challenges that we face and RTD of course faces. So the rest of the meeting was, was uh, time given to me to make a presentation, which is Colorado's COVID crisis, RTD's risk and opportunities, followed by a very broad Q and A and I want to say that although in, ideally we provide our recommendations at the very end of the, you know, July or whenever the committee wraps, this is such an urgent issue because it has such a huge impact on the finances of RTD. And the sooner we can get past this COVID issue, the sooner we can get back to really focusing on the longer term things as well. So I do think it's worthwhile for me to reach out to some of the other groups and see if the ideas that were put together for that are useful for those groups and whether they want uh, us to work together with them on it. But it will not be the main focus of our committee. So that's mine. How did I do? <laughs> you did great, Rhett. Thank you so much. Um, are there any questions of Rhett? There's lots, I'm sure, but please be kind. <laughs> Well, why don't we just keep moving on then? Um, so thank you for that, Rhett. Um, so next up is governance, and we'll have um, Doug Rex, who has been sort of the staff um, lead on that, um, give us a quick update on that. We won't dump that on the chairs unexpectedly. 
Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Uh, yes, so we've met three times since the, the RTD Accountability Committee, full committee has met last. Um, and we are meeting again this afternoon, just FYI for anybody that's interested at four o'clock today. Um, you're welcome. I know you just can't get enough of me. So we figured we'd add another one. Um, so if, um, so the first meeting was primarily just a refinement of the objectives like the other three, other two subcommittees. Then um, the committee itself, subcommittee itself has decided to, um, that the first area they wanted to focus in was have a look at governance models throughout the country. So we did a quick case study um, of six, six places. Um, this was related to a white paper that was done for Oklahoma City back in 17. So we looked at Phoenix, Detroit, Dallas, Portland, San Diego, and Salt Lake City. And um, then at the last meeting, we did a uh, just kind of a case study review of LA Metro. And uh, LA Metro, it's fairly typical with regards to its governance, with regards to its, its actual governing body. It has um, a 15 member board, but it has these things called local, local service councils, which, um, which was interesting, you know, kind of a little, uh, it was just a, a little different than other models that we looked at. So we're gonna explore that a little long, a little more. And I, uh, I'll just mention to the full committee that at the November 2nd subcommittee meeting, which is at four o'clock on November 2nd, there's gonna be a staff briefing from LA Metro. LA Metro is gonna join us and, and provide a uh, in-depth um, presentation on their local government, their, their local service councils. So um, we'll be getting more information out to the full, full committee on that, but I would encourage you to attend that meeting. Thank you, Madam Co-Chair. Wonderful job, Doug. Um, any questions for Doug? Okay, then we'll um, have our last subcommittee update from Matthew, uh, the operations subcommittee. Good morning. Um, we've had two uh, operations subcommittee meetings uh, this month. Uh, the first one, uh, we had a presentation from RTD staff on how they conduct um, service planning. And uh, there was some question and answer at the end and a little bit of conversation. Uh, the Next operation subcommittee, there was a brief presentation by Dr. Cogstaff on service planning that in uh, transit service planning that included best practices and uh, important considerations. Uh, and then there was a discussion about equity and um, equity of fares and best practices of um, fare structure was one of the topics that uh, the committee, there was consensus that they wanted to dive in to further on that topic. Wow. And I'd you be happy the, to you, take any you questions. You get the gold star for brevity. <laughs> any questions for Matthew? Okay, um, thanks um, to our subcommittee leads. And uh, in the future, I guess the new chairs will be doing that, um, those updates. So now we wanted to, to really sort of turn to the meat of the meeting is in the spirit of, again, what we talked about before of really wanting to um, get go deep into the work and start making tangible progress for ourselves and, and for all the people that are watching us closely. Um, we uh, Crystal and I um, put pen to paper on what we've heard to date from the subcommittees about um, where the most fruitful and uh, areas of inquiry are in terms of looking at recommendations with an eye towards um, getting more specific and focused because, because as was mentioned, our mission is so broad, um, we could really spin our wheels being overwhelmed by all that. So where are the places where we know um, uh, that there, there needs to be improvement where we think that we could provide um, some suggestions on, on what that might look like. So the if I could ask Melinda to, to put that up on the screen, it's a it's a two pager that that um, outlines like four ish uh, focus areas for each subcommittee and tried to uh, put them in order of priority. And we did go deep on this, so it's pretty detailed. And so we wanted to bring this this to you to see if we are um, in the right place. 
and if you could maybe uh, make that a little larger, that would be great. So you know, I'm just gonna go through this and uh, maybe get feedback as we go um, to see if we're um, on the right track. And then we sort of have our subcommittee marching orders and, and can move forward. So just uh, um, starting off with uh, our missions just cut and paste. And then um, we wrote down sort of the core problems that we're trying to address just to remind ourselves that our recommendations, we're not just looking at, you know, how we might, um, you know, make RTD a, a transit agency like other transit agencies. There are specific problems that RTD has that we want to address. And it's helpful to write them down so that we can point back and make sure we're not getting off track um, and that we're focusing on the most important ones. And so I'm not, I don't wanna read through each of these. I think they'll look familiar, financial stability, ridership, trust, um, levels of service, partnerships, resolving unfin unfinished fast tracks corridors, um, being responsive to um, uh, where the world's going, um, addressing workforce challenges. So we just tried to capture there, uh, again, what we thought were the, the kind of the most burning issues. So I'll just stop there and see if there's any questions, feedback on the purpose of this document or um, problem areas. Jackie. Shocking, right? No, I, I just want to say a huge thanks to both of our co-chairs. This was a tremendous amount of work and I was very impressed with it. But, and this is really more of a question. One of the things that we even heard from the public comment this morning is the reliability issue associated with um, RTD. And, and I'm not sure where that, it could be under the rebuilding trust and transparency, but I'd like to just give an example that happened even with my community um, and we were told with very short notice that service was going to be cut to a station and there was going to be no bus bridge uh, provided. We were between these two stations where there wasn't going to be service. And the issue was related to uh, workforce. They didn't have enough, enough bus uh, operators. But again, to me, the reliability of the RTD service has been a challenge. Um, and pre-COVID, this is a pre-COVID issue. So I, sure. I guess I... I think that is a core problem and I didn't see it specifically called out. Great, that's a great um, comment and certainly corroborated by our um, um, public comment this morning. So, all right, I'll make a note to add that in in the core problem area. Anything else, Kristen? I think one of the ways we can look at this is we need to, or RTD needs to somehow improve their customer experience is very, it's very broad statement, but that kind of includes reliability, uh, safety, all of these other concerns that people have, and that's why they don't use RTD. So I don't expect there to be, you know, a food car attached to all of these different trains. I don't expect there to be a flight attendant in, in every single bus, but somehow RTD needs to improve the cert the experience that they are providing to their customers. Great, um, I think that's um, something maybe we can combine with the right reliability uh, comment to make um, right. you know, just about customer service and quality of, of service. That makes a whole lot of sense. Any final comments on problem areas? Really appreciate this feedback, Rhett. Yeah, um, one thing that I think we need to think about when we're evaluating all of these things uh, is is that SurveyMonkey is a pretty useful tool for talking to your customers and trying to understand in a little more depth what their real issues are. For example, in restoring ridership, one of my questions is how big is the fear of catching COVID? Because a lot of our our we, a lot of people we've lost have no idea what we're doing to try to prevent that. And so that's one of, of many, but there's a long list of things, and we know who those customers are. We've got some email addresses on a lot of them. 
We know who's not using the system anymore. I think there's a real opportunity to understand, especially in rebuilding ridership, just as one example, you know, you, it, it shouldn't be a ready fire aim. You know, it should be a ready aim fire. We need to understand what it is the problem is that we're trying to solve before we launch out there and try to put together some ideas about a rebuild ridership. One of many issues, but knowledge sure. is power in this. So Solid. that's a tool we, we might use in, in sort of fleshing that out. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Anything else? If not, we're going to move on to the actual issue area of focus. If I could get Melinda to scroll up the, or scroll down the document. So, and I don't, did folks have a chance to read the, through this? I'm seeing well, some nods. <laughs> I know it's a little detailed, but uh, so we'll just sort of briefly um, um, go through. Uh, on the governance subcommittee, I'm getting right at um, looking at an alternative governance structure and a, a consistent theme um, that has come up is what a regional sub-regional uh, model potentially and what that might look like. And the bullets under number one sort of flesh out some of the characteristics and qualities that we might want to look at um, in put, putting together an alternative um, uh, structure proposal around, again, the, the, the you know, regional routes versus local routes, shared funding that might help not only rebuild trust, but then um, provide leverage in local areas, have to be aware of the equity issue between um, well-funded and, and less well-funded communities um, could borrow from the Dr. Cog sub-regional TIP forum process that has um, that that our communities are are familiar with and have been um, uh, involved in, and um, and looking at actually having performance criteria that that um, link back to um, not only transportation but um, sort of the regional vision in Metro Vision. Um, in order to, to guide the planning. So that was suggested as, a, as the first priority feeds right into the work that the governance subcommittee has been doing on looking at other governance models, particularly ones that work, work closely with local communities as partners. Number two was about, um, again, partnership, but looking at partnering um, with other transit agencies, nonprofits, et cetera, um, to provide better service and that could be both within and outside the, the um, district. And it could be a way to address um, ridership and, and um, low ridership areas as well. So that was suggestions number two. Three and four, um, one looking at the, the, the size of the RTD service area and um, whether or not that's, that's the uh, appropriate size and structure. And then also looking at the RTD board, and put that—that's an issue that's come up frequently. We thought um, uh, putting it number four because it, it, it's something we want to get to, but perhaps not lead with because that's more of a process than an outcome. And really wanting to to be able to hone in and answer the question: if we're going to make recommendations around the RTD board, which of the core um, problem areas that would solve. And um, and you'll see the bullet under there. Also look at whether or not there's a way to include um, a broader uh, advisory um, capacity, other folks um, in uh, representing, uh, providing representation on an RTD board or similar structure. So that's what um, we put down for governance. Questions, comments, did we get it right? Um, again, is this the right priority? What do folks think? Uh, Elise, this is uh, Crystal. Can I, do you mind if I chime in really quick before we get into that? Not at all. And then Chris, you're up after that. Thank you. I, I just quick note, Julie Mullica is on the line somewhere. I, I think she's having some tech issues. She just wanted me to, make a note to that she is um, listening in, um, especially with her um, designation as chair. I think if 
if our new chairs um, again have any further questions after the call today i know that um, we want to be mindful of kind of you know we just appointed new leadership and are trying to narrow down these um this focus as well so i just wanted to make a note that she was on there and then just kind of call that out that there will be i guess ample opportunity for you all to review ask questions of, of us in determining these uh refined roles and again a, a, in addition to the conversation today thanks great thanks for that chris and if you're talking we can't hear you so you might be muted Ah, can you hear me now? Yep. Oh, that's cool. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Buttons. Just keep pushing the button, the mouse button, until something happens. <laughs> Eventually, they turn green. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted to just quickly add something to four. Uh, one of the things I've been really impressed by is the scale and size um, of the RTD board. And so, uh, when we look at the the leadership, I mean. The company that we're talking about here at RTD is a multi-billion dollar company. Um, the, the amount of complexity and issues, and I, I even see it just in myself, um, I get tempted. Uh-oh, I can't hear you anymore. We lost you, man. <laughs> I do think that was a good good comment, though. You know, you, you I, I, it was multi- starting to be. But over a billion dollar company, it's pretty complex to run. So, Chris, we still can't hear you. Are you still trying to speak? We can't quite tell. All right. You're gonna you're gonna um, send in your comment in written form. I appreciate that. Okay, other verbal comments. I think I see Rebecca and then Jackie. Uh, so just a, a couple things. I I appreciate the sub bullet under four. I think that makes a lot of sense. I'll you know take for example CDOT. We've had a 11 member uh, governing body ourselves. Um, and I think we would be happy to share some experiences on on that process. And then relatedly, I'd encourage the subcommittee under number two to, to just also keep uh, busting in the back of your mind. Um, this is CDOT's own transit service. And you know we're continuing to look at new ways to also serve our public through busting. And one, uh, one example comes to mind that we've heard a lot of um, access needs for veterans trying to get from sort of around the state, particularly to the VA center in Aurora. And one of the things we've talked about is running um, a busting service from Union Station out to the Aurora VA. So it, it'd be helpful, it, you know, it's not directly related to some of the other examples, but I think keeping busting in the back of your mind and if at any point the committee wanted to hear from someone who works on that service, I'd be happy to make that connection. Thanks for that. And it could be that we want to, we talk about other transit agencies, we could say, including CDOT, to just hammer that home. Because I do think on the mobility hubs that that um, CDOT's working on for Bustang and other um, transit providers, that that, you know, there's a real important area of collaboration. So thanks for That's that. That's a super good point, Elise. Yeah, thank you. Jackie, you're up next. Um, I just want to say again, thanks for this great work by our co-chairs. And I think that as a member of the governance subcommittee, I think I'm looking forward to kind of digging into this a little bit more this afternoon. And and my only comment would be that in my mind, uh, as far as the priorities, number four is something that I'm keeping in mind as I'm considering one, two, and three. And it isn't to, and I don't know that, I don't think you meant this to be, we're going to do one and then we're going to do two and one, we're going to do three. But I think the idea as we explore these other alternative structures, um, part of that is an, a, determin- a determination or an assessment of whether or not the existing structure is the right one. So that's my only comment as far as priorities. To me, number four is happening in, in, at the same time, you know, in parallel with the others. It's not sequential for me. 
and I'd love to talk to that with with the with the operations subcommittee this afternoon. Great, thanks, Jackie. Any other comments on this governance section, Daya? Yeah, I, I echo, I think, what Jackie and Rebecca have both shared. I think for me, one thing that keeps coming up is that we as a committee have talked a lot about partnerships and enabling partnerships. But I, I hope that as part of our analysis and assessment that we take the time to really identify what the root cause challenges are to each of these being implemented within RTD um, and offer some sort of recommendations based on what the true like what the true issue or root cause of that issue might be. I, I see in the participant list, you know, folks from the city of Westminster, um, ULIS from city and county of Denver were on. So there's a lot of folks that are eager to partner, but what is that challenge that we're experiencing in actually making those a reality? So thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, good point. All right, last call for any government governance comments. All right, let's scroll scroll down further to the next one. Okay, operations. Um, number one, um, uh, look at the fares and past programs on how how they could be improved to increase equity, ridership, affordability. Um, that happened to be the the area that the operations subcommittee flagged that they really wanted to go to next. So that was easy to to um, lead with. Um, Number two, making recommendations on how to enhance service delivery, particularly to the transit reliant vulnerable populations. This was a driving piece of our mission instructions when this committee was was um, focused, and we could can use a lot of the data that Reimagine RTD has already developed. Um, third, um, going deep on community-based transit service planning and operations, really working directly with local communities on what is needed and how to formalize that sort of feedback mechanism as changes are made to say service um, and routes and that kind of thing. Four is more of a process thing than an outcome, but it needed to be on sort of the to-do list as we are, we were directly, we were directed in our, um, uh, committee uh, formation documents to undertake an overall organizational assessment and I assume that might be an area where we work with some of our outside um, uh, either consultants or um, additional research help um, to take a look at that and then five um, Crystal I don't know if you wanted to speak to this one I think you directly um, um, were a part of getting that added in Hey there. I, are you there? Yes. Um, I'm sorry. Will you direct me one more time to the, the point? Oh, you like number, me to number five was something that you felt strongly about um, including. So I just wanted to give you a chance to say anything on yeah, the operations yeah. subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, I think this was just a uh, full circle in terms of um, how we provide operations. This, this is not a new point for me to bring up to the committee. We've talked about it in kind of the equity assessment. Um, I don't think it is incorrect or wrong to kind of list it out, um, especially when we talk about equity, because uh, equity, as I've experienced in conversations on council and just in other scenarios, can be defined in many different ways. And so I think emphasizing the way in which we are defining and addressing equity um, as it relates to operations. I know that that's part of our just lens in this um, conversation. Um, that's why we put together that equity statement, but I, I just felt like it couldn't have been emphasized enough. So that was really just the, me going to be, again, bringing that to the forefront in our conversations and in centering equity and social environmental justice as well. Great. Thanks for that explanation. So comments, questions on the operations subcommittee focus areas. And, and while people are formulating their thoughts, it'll be useful to just remind people that this is not the last opportunity for you to weigh in on this, you know, 
after you've had a chance to sleep on it and digest it a little bit more. I'm not seeing any hands raised, which either means- Elise, this is Chris. I finally pushed a bunch of buttons. It seems to be working a little better, so my apologies. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the operations subcommittee, if I could, and I don't know exactly, and this may come out of us as a group as we move along, but I think trying to get to something that is, uh, I don't know what the right phrase is, sort of simpler, a kind of organizing principle around what good operations looks like. Um, so we've got time to do that, but when I look at this, there's a lot. And so um, there you go. I mean, I think there are people on this call who've spent their lives um, trying to figure out these five things. So I don't know exactly what I mean, but uh, we talked a little bit about that there are metrics out there that simplify, you know, defining what success looks like here. Okay, I'm furiously writing down your comment. Thank you. Any other Thank you. thoughts? At least under, under this, considering that w there's a new um, general manager starting with RTD, and I'm assuming she has some thoughts about operations in particular. Uh, and I, I do think um, of, of all, I, I think the operations and finance probably are both, both I mean, she probably has ideas about governance, but but I guess I'm just curious. And again, what how are we going to engage? And, and I'm I'm sorry, this is off topic, but as I look at this, I'm kind of curious what her vision is regarding operations and changes that she uh, would like to bring to the organization. And I guess I I don't want us working in parallel when there's an opportunity. And I guess I'm just throwing that out to the body to say, has anybody else thought of that? And and how it would be effective to engage her in this process a little bit. I don't know. Just well, just so you know, just to insert the uh, update, she starts the morning of our next full committee meeting. So we thought, eh, that might be a tough way to start the day, just um, diving into this committee. So we, I, we are, uh, I believe, getting on our schedule to have her come and speak to us at our December full committee meeting. And um, ahead of that, I think we want to send her this document at you know after we finish refining it to say here's where we're thinking of sort of focus areas love to get your feedback and additions and thoughts and and maybe that can be sort of some of the stuff of of what she speaks to us about in december that would be great i guess i i, I i'm anxious to hear what her ideas are around the operations uh issue in particular yep but she'll have had a whole month to figure it out. So. Uh, I, I, she no had more than that, right? She knew what she was getting into when she uh, applied, and I'm sure it's been a very thorough process with the board. So I think she's been doing a lot of bedtime reading, I'm guessing. OK, I'm not seeing any other hands. We can move on to the last one if folks are ready. So number one's a, a, um, a bit of a catch-all, um, but with a focus on, we I think we've talked about this probably in every subcommittee, but we need to, to actually come up with a list on if there are um, provisions in the RTD statutes, and we've mentioned several that limit RTD's ability financially, revenue generation, and in other ways, that it's worth us calling um, those out. So we're tasking the finance subcommittee with, again, actually looking at the words on paper and and you know what edits are we suggesting, and why. Um, and I, I flag this. Um, we have the opportunity um, in our our charter to make. Uh, t uh, um, when am I not temporary? Um, initial recommendations and and um, initial report at the end of this year. And I would suggest we, as well as our final report next July, and I would suggest we want to take advantage of that opportunity. And one of the things that we should probably um, include in that uh, initial um, feedback is if we want the legislature to take a look at any of these things, we should let them know before the legislative session starts. And on that, I got a call out of the blue from Matt Gray. He wound up talking an hour you know on, on some of this related stuff he was one of the two a lot of faith winner the the sponsors for this and um 
he seemed receptive to the idea of, of uh, trying to get something done earlier on, but we'll see. Depends on what we ask him to do. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's a good conversation to have, and I think um, I think it was Lynn Geisinger that had mentioned that um, RTD's lobbyist is very familiar with these um, statutes and discussions that have been had over the years about whether or not there needs to be changes, and that might be um, something the finance subcommittee wants to put on the agenda for the next meeting is hearing directly from her. We do not have to reinvent the wheel in terms yeah. of those provisions. So. Yeah, I know she was listening in on our, our subcommittee meeting, and I got a great call from her on some of the ideas that we put together. I've known her for 25 years. So. Excellent. Excellent. She's great. She is superb. So number two is it's sort of one of the elephants in the room on what are we going to do about the unfinished fast tracks corridors? Obviously, is that, big, is that a big? Go ahead, get it. <laughs> Um, and, and we need to recognize and be transparent. It's really big for play, people who come from um, corridors that are unfinished, like I, that's the neighborhood I come from, right? Northwest Corridor. So it's really important to us. And it's also important for other um, areas of the system who are worried about what resolving those um, unfinished corridors might do to the service in their neck of the woods. So. We have to recognize that um, any resolution of this will impact RTE's finances, but it's one of the big sort of um, black clouds, both in terms of trust with um, local communities who feel like they haven't gotten what they voted for, and um, black clouds on RTD's long-term financial future is, you know, what is the the full capital long-term capital budget that that RTD is responsible for? So we need to ideally um, have this committee um, figure out how to address that. Mm -hmm. um, and Elise, if I could just add to that, I think there's a lot of attention and focus on the unfinished corridors to the north, but we can't forget that there is also an unfinished corridor along the southwest. And there isn't a mayor or a group of citizens, there, there isn't a mayor uh, that really represents that large swath that has been also been paying into RTD for a very, very long time and, and has done land use planning around the completion of that Southwest line as well. And so I recognize that the South has gotten more, but, and I'm not, it shouldn't be an either or. So I just, I just want the committee, since there isn't a mayor advocating for that body, um, for those people, uh, I, I want to make sure we don't forget about the Southwest extension as, as well. So I kind of feel like that's my responsibility to make 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 that comment. We we would expect no less from you, Jackie. Okay, then moving on. Um, number three, um, how to improve um, financial transparency? Um, again. This is both financial and about rebuilding trust. How is how is money coming in? How is it being spent? And we flagged that CDOT's gone through a similar process with regards to Senate Bill 267, and that might be something we want to look at. Mm -hmm. And then I think the legislature especially would appreciate something like that too. Yep. And then the last one is examining partnership opportunities to enhance and provide mobility services. Um, in, in some circumstances, there may be other transit providers or partners that could do it cheaper or better or in places where RTD does not have services. And that's important for a lot of different reasons, but it's certainly important for financial reasons as well. And I think so, Rebecca's example on CDOT there was really a great one, uh, mm -hmm. you know, working with, with the VA uh, to provide that, that particular service. There, there should be many other cases like that if we really think through it well and reach out to them for their ideas. Mm -hmm. All right, other, other comments, questions? The one comment I would make is that uh, in all of these three different major areas, I think we really have to think out of the box about solutions. I don't think minor tweaks are going to solve some of these problems. Some of it is fis fiscal discipline, you know, in, in some of these areas, but it's also about 
how do we really, you know, take the take the disabled community? Is there is there a better model than any of the models that we've looked at so far there for trying to solve some of those some of those problems? Just really, you know, thinking originally to some of these problems. I think that's a good point, Rut. Um, I think we, it's often helpful for us to remember why this committee was formed. Yep. We, we can say and think and recommend things that other existing bodies may not be able to, yep. right? Because we can think outside the box because we don't have to worry about offending anybody. We don't have to worry about whatever. Not that we want to be offensive, but just the point being we're independent. So I'm looking for other hands on thoughts, comments. I just wanted to add to Rudd, I think I would go even a step further and say that repeating the same behavior and expecting a different result is a sign of something. So. Um, <laughs> is the Einstein quote. And judging yeah. by the success of, or rather failure of Clemson basketball near and dear to my heart, who have been doing the same thing for 45 years and uh, are no good as a result. Uh, All right, well said. Georgia Tech keeps slaying football. I don't know. <laughs> We're good at football. We're good at football, right? <laughs> okay, so um, then we'll wrap up this discussion here for today. I imagine that each of the subcommittees, when they meet next, will um, look closely at their sections for any sort of final thoughts. But we want a finalized document, hopefully, in the next week that we say, okay. Here's, this is our, our to-do list. It can be, as we go along, we can add to it, but right now, this is where we're focusing our work. And um, I think um, another piece of it will need to be, uh, it just in terms of um, timing of where, again, we might wanna make some initial comments by the year's end, where, where should we be, um, what should the next few meetings focus on so that we can actually um, work through some of these issues and, and start getting clarity on our on the recommendations we want to make. And if I may say for our committee members who are all here right now, uh, this will be our, our top agenda item when we get together. We're not going to solve all these problems in one meeting, but uh, it, it would be really useful if, if everybody thought about those before our meeting on Thursday. Because I think we need to, as, as Elise says, uh, we need to really start focusing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And on number one, I appreciate the, the connection to the upcoming legislative session. I think that'd be a, that'd be a shame to miss the, the next session and not have an opportunity to feed in some input to them on some changes that could be made. So thank you for that. That's a good idea. All right. Okay, then. Um, then we'll close this out then. And I would also add that the new subcommittee chairs, um, Crystal and I um, and Dr. Cogstaff will be meeting with the subcommittee chairs to make sure that we're really tight on agendas for both the full committee and the subcommittee meetings going forward. And with that, um, let me just turn it over to see if there's any other matters or comments from members. Let me start with Dr. Cogstaff and see if Doug, is there anything that you wanted to bring up, bring to our attention right now? Yes, Madam Co-Chair, thank you very much. I, I just wanted to point out that the email that Melinda Stevens sent out to you all with the agenda on Friday, it also included, there's two attachments that, that were included in that. One was uh, both are revised red line versions of the, uh, the committee guidelines, as well as the equity assessment mission statement. So if, if when and when you guys get an opportunity to have a look at that, that would be fabulous. And just let us know, hopefully by the end of the week, if you're okay with that or you had some some revisions, so we can get it out to the full committee again. And once we're once we feel comfortable with that, we'll then post those two documents on our on our web page. Thank you, Doug. Tell us when is our um, deadline for getting that in? We shouldn't want we shouldn't wait till the next full committee. That's a that's a month away. Maybe we can no. tie, tie a bow on that sooner. Yes, that would be fabulous. By the end of this week, it'd be great um, if we can get all those comments in. Thank you. There's, there's not, there weren't many comments really. 
and we've already discussed both items pretty thoroughly right. so okay any all right so and let me open it up to any other uh comments from members rebecca yeah i'd like to introduce natalie shishido i believe mm -hmm. she's on um, she is a, a fellow who um, was brought on by CDOT, um, but brought on solely to assist this committee. Uh, she's a graduate student at CU um, and is available for any sort of, I don't want to say simpler because none of what we have ahead of us is simple, but any more sort of straightforward research tasks um, that will allow us to really focus North Highland on, on the, the hardest, most sort of uh, transit knowledge intensive activities. Um, but she's been trying to attend each of the subcommittee meetings. I uh, just encourage you to, to tap her. She's already um, created some uh, research for us on the, the finance group. So uh, please, I don't know, Natalie, if you can turn your camera on, but um, we're delighted to have her and, and please make use of her. Hi. Got a, she's there. <laughs> Thanks, <Sure. Dad. laughs> <laughs> Natalie, thank you so much for all of the wonderful work that you're going to do for us. We really appreciate it. Should we contact you directly, Rebecca? There, there, she, is. there she is. Hi. So go through Rebecca if you want to try to get on Natalie's list. Uh, probably more like Ron and Matthew, but um, okay. Yeah, and she'll have a state e email here soon, and I'll I'll share that with the full group. Well, we're happy to have you on board. Yeah, excited to be here. Adam right, Cochia. Yeah. If, if I may, I I just I just want to say just publicly, I want to thank CDOT for for providing this this resource to us. I mean, I think it's really, really gonna help. She's a very talented young lady for sure. And uh, we're excited to we're excited to get her to work. Absolutely, absolutely. Any other comments from members? All right. Could it be that we're going to finish early? I thought we were going to run out of time for sure. We run a tight ship. <laughs> yes, we do, Crystal. Thanks to you for cracking the whip. All right, well then, we'll give these eight minutes back to you. Everybody gets another cup of coffee. And uh, we will see you all in our subcommittee meetings, starting with the one that's this afternoon. All right. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you. Bye. Bye.